Hi, this is James from the Hornball Technical Support Team and this is a tutorial to show you how to create self-service wizards. Um, I'm going to do two separate tutorials, one for a simple wizard and one to contain some advanced options around them as well. So I'm going to show you the actual creation of the wizard. Um, I'm also going to show you how to associate them to a service and also show you uh, what happens when you log on a call against them. So these wizards are used purely um, as a way of gathering information from your end user as they're logging calls via your portal. So if you're go going live with a portal, these are extremely useful. Um, otherwise, you might end up needing to call them back, asking for specific information, error messages, etc. Um, whereas you can actually ask them to provide it when they're logging the call. So you can see that I'm in the general settings area here. So I'll go into the file manage settings, general settings and self-service wizards. These will be available on uh, all ITSM versions and ITSMF um, doesn't have services so it won't apply uh, to that particular uh, area. Okay so what I'm going to show you now is the actual creation of a new wizard. Uh, so I'm just going to click on add. It will come with some out-of-the-box ones here but you can add in. We're going to add in our own here. So I'm just going to give the wizard a name. There we go, you can give it a description if you wish. Now you can see here that it's going to give you a default table and a default column. What these are for is when the wizard's actually filled out and the call's logged via your portal. Um, this is important because this is where the actual details of the wizard, like the answers, will actually appear in. So update db update text is basically the call diary. So as soon as it comes in, it's going to write it to the first entry of your call diary. So it's got all in one list, all of their responses. So I'm just going to click on Add Record. You can see it's added to the list here. Now we have a tab called Steps. Now Steps are important because you can then define um, what kind of questions are actually in your step. So this will be, um, each step will be one particular page if you think about it that way. So if I just add in a couple of steps, uh, gathering basic information, um, perhaps uh, Hardware details. Maybe final checks. You could do a, a, as many you know steps as you like, and you also can actually go between wizards as well, which we'll go through soon. Um, so if we go into the first step, so here we have uh, step one, and within the tab questions, so you can add in, start adding in your questions for basic basic information. So let's have a type here so you can um, you can select different types as um, text box which will obviously be just a simple uh, blank text box that you can enter in some information it'll be a one-liner um, text box um, radio box of which you can actually uh, choose choices so it will be set predefined radio box choices um, check boxes um, obviously that's self-explanatory just check boxes you can select more than one out of these choices here um, select box is a drop down box so again it's predefined choices and you select it from a drop down and also multi line which is the same as text box but obviously multiple lines like a, a larger box um, perhaps you can use that for your main main details of the issue that they're reporting um, another thing such as date ranges uh, option selectors or custom figures so I'm going to enter in a couple of uh, text boxes and I'm just going to mark that as mandatory as well you have a couple of options down here for each individual question um, such as mandatory it won't let you move on to the next step um, until you answer it um, you'll also see that the question appears in red writing you can hide the question um, in the advanced uh, tutorial you'll see the reasons why you'd want to uh, hide the question um, and prefix question. So the prefix question is when um, the call has been logged. You'll see that when the actual uh, answer has come through, the question is also written to the diary as well as the answer. So I'm going to tick 
prefix and mandatory for this particular one. Obviously, it's going to be very simple. Um, you wouldn't necessarily need them to tell you the first name. Um, well, maybe this is a new starter. Um, so let's change that. Okay. These target column and default values, um, we can use that during the advanced uh, tutorial as well. Um, we're not going to jump to another question based on the answer for this particular one. Um, so I'm going to go add. So what's the first name? Again, I'm going to do the same thing of surname. There we go. So that's simple. Um, so now that's in place, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that for my basic information. Hardware details, what hardware does uh, the person need. Now we can use, uh, perhaps let's use a radio box for that. Maybe please select desktop required. So you can enter in choices here. So let's have a value of um, maybe a Dell workstation. Maybe they're lucky, lucky enough to get a MacBook. Or maybe just a standard Dell Latitude. Uh, so here, here are the options. Um, we're not going to specify a table, key column, or a filter. Um, we're just going to specify these particular uh, choices. So I'm going to do the same thing, mandatory prefix question. And maybe we'll do another one for the software that's required. Let's do a checkbox. Uh, this time I'm not going to choose mandatory. So let's choose MS Office. Adobe. And SAP, let's say. There we go. So let's say we'll keep with these two. And then final checks. Let's add in. Let's do a select box. Can you confirm? Something simple, we could do something like yes, yes and no. It doesn't really matter what the question is, it doesn't really make sense in this context, but um, I'm sure you'll get it from that. Um, there we go. So, um, let's say, for example, they're on the first step, so the first actual page, and let's say they don't actually need hardware at all. So, you can actually skip that particular step there. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to add a select box in for um, does the new starter require hardware or software? Maybe they don't. So I'm going to take choices of yes, yes, and no. Add that if I go back into the question. Now I'm going to tick the box this time for jump to another question based on the answer. So um, I'm going to say if the value is yes, they do need hardware, I'm going to select my test wizard 
I want it to go to hardware details and please ask me what uh, desktops required as the next question. However, if they say no, then I want you to go to the test wizard and go into the final checks. There we go. So that means it will skip the, the hardware details step. Um, so what you can do is um, at this stage you could have you know several steps in here and uh, let's say it can actually finish um, you know at the hardware detail stage maybe you don't need to do the final checks. You can also tick that box there to say this is a wizard completed step. If you do that you'll need to make sure that you do still have jump to um, questions based on answers. Therefore um, if you if you don't have that it will actually finish it and won't actually provide you with the third step. If you say step two is a completed step then it's not even going to ask you the questions from the third step it's just going to finish blog call. Um, so make sure that if you do have that in steps which is not the last one then you would need to include some kind of jump to that other uh, stages or steps even. So if I save that, um, a wizard is ready. So what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to associate that to one of my services. Okay, so I'm going to use our new starter one just because it's there. Uh, I'm just going to amend some of the options. I just need to complete the actual service itself. So I'm just going to subscribe my customer record to it. Okay, so Alan Castle's now there. I'm going to select Edit Request Form. And here, instead of using the new starter request, I'm going to use my new test wizard. So you can select your wizard, you can select your business process from this area as well. I've done a section on the uh, services, so you may wish to view them. Um, they're very much similar in terms of functionalities, and um, they are linked. Okay, so I'm going to save changes there. So now let's log on to the service portal and see how it looks like. Let's log on with Alan Castle since he's the one that we've just subscribed to that service. Now to remember where it's in, here it is. So when we raise our request, here's our wizard. So because we haven't put any description against the wizard, that's the reason why it's blank here. Um, so it's gone straight to our first step. Please advise of the first name of the new starter. Let's say I didn't enter it in. It's going to tell me there's a mandatory question. You need to fill it in. So I'm going to do that. Uh, so let's use some name. Do Ian Bell. So let's say we in this particular question here, does a new starter require hardware software? Let's just say for this instance, I'm going to say no. That means it shouldn't then ask us and go to the second step, which was the hardware gathering stage. So I'm going to click on next. So then you can see it goes to our final stage or step um, in regards to the uh, select box um, and the interviews required, yes, no. So once that's done, um, it will ask you then if you've got any components linked to your uh, request, and then you can select them, um, select an SLA, and that's then going to give you a reference number. So that's then logged. Um, so now we're going to see what happens when you now do it and say yes to the required hardware or software. So now it's asked to select the desktop required, such as the Dell workstation, maybe I want these two. And now it's going to go on to our final checks again. Then again, there we go. 
So now I've switched back to the SupportWorks client. You can see that uh, in the original description there, uh, it's included the question and the uh, person and your responses. Uh, there's certain ones there that I took off the prefix. So you can see how they look as well, uh, such as the choices uh, that you've chosen. Um, so the same thing has happened for call number 16 as well, as you can see from the top there. So that's the basics around the wizards. Um, please have a look at the uh, advanced one for the other particular advanced settings.